a very special time. Lisa Moser, is it Moser or Moser? We pronounce it Moser. Moser, I love it. It's okay, it's all good. Well, listen, everyone butchers my name, so it's all good. But um, Lisa, it has been amazing to see your journey. And I think I met you, what, maybe two, three years ago? Three years, three years. Three years ago. And I mean, on the outside, you look the same, but on the inside, I see a totally different woman. And we're calling this thing something special tonight. We're calling it Beauty and Books. And I love what somebody said. They said, is it Beauty and the Beast? Meaning like, I'm the (laughs) Beast. And I said, look, I'll take that, you know, I'll, t- I love that. So, love it. so listen, uh, Tanisha's managing comments. Thanks for doing that tonight, Tanisha. Yeah, and we have people, yeah, jumping in. We have um, a lot of people jumping in. So we have Lori from New Jersey. We have John, tell us where you're from, Kansas. Uh, Jeff Elder says, one of my favorite people, and I know he's not talking about me. Uh-huh. So, that's one of my favorite people too. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Laura's here from Wisconsin, and yeah, we have beauty and books. So, listen, this is such a treat tonight. We are going to be talking about your book, but we're also going to be talking about self-esteem and body image and what a book can do for you. So, here's what I want to do before we get started with the party. Before we learn a little bit about you, Tanisha has a free gift for everybody. And so what I'd love for you to do, if you're watching this right now, the more people that share this thing, the more people that tag someone who needs to know about self-image, body image, books, writing, publishing, marketing, what a book can do for you, if you guys can share that and then just literally type in the word shared. And what Tanisha is going to do is she's going to give you a brand new gift that's uh, pretty, pretty cool, I think. And you'll be able to use it, and it'll help your author career immediately. So, Lisa, let's get started. You've been okay. Miss Ohio. You've been called Mrs. International. What are? I'm just going to hit right in the gut right away. Okay. Go ahead. What are some of the other names that you knew you had, but other people didn't? Maybe some of those struggles that even when you were on stage, how did you feel inside? Absolutely. You know, it's funny because it's part of what I write about is like what people see on the outside is not always the real thing or what's happening. And so even I always tell my story of even standing on the Miss USA stage. I mean, there I was 24 years old, looking like a confident young woman, having it all together, you know, up there in a bathing suit and high heels, feeling very insecure, Mm. feeling like I don't belong here. Um, And you know, and it all, you know, there's a big story behind that all, but it's just what I like to share is it just goes to show that it's not, things are not always as they seem. Mm -hmm. And so, and that really is just coming from, you know, what, what we talk about is a, it's a mind, it's a mind thing. It is. I always say, I'll look back at pictures now and I'll, what was that young girl? Mm -hmm. What did she like about herself? What was the, you know what I mean? And it's, and I'm sure that there'll be someday. 20 years from now that I'll look back now and say, why did I think I look so old right now? (laughs) That's just how we are as humans. We judge ourselves. Exactly. And I'll tell you, you know, I always tell people we are, you know, there's so much talk about bullying in the world and and kids bullying, but you know what? We can be sometimes our worst bully of our self-talk and what we tell ourselves. And so, you know, that goes from being, you know, back on the Miss USA stage and competing on national television, you know, I got to meet, I, I actually, Dick Clark, God rest his soul, was our, um, the guy that was in charge. He's been amazing guy. So, and then sitting and talking with him, you know, knowing that, you know, he was a little subconscious. He wasn't really tall. I mean, we all have things. You know, I've met a lot of people in my life, a lot of models and a lot, you know, a lot of people and everybody has their stuff. Yep. Everybody has that thing in them that they fight against. Oh, absolutely. And it even comes to this in books and should I write? Should I not write? How do I do it? We all have that inner self bully it's that, true. that we yeah. have to overcome. I think you're absolutely right. I'm going to ask people to go ahead, type in their clear, concise, and direct question for Lisa. Lisa, you reminded me of something. I just finished an audio book by uh, Phil Knight and uh, the founder of Nike, and it's called Shoe Dog. And I love it, by the way. It it was a really interesting book. But he talks in the book how he 
was in a circle with Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. <laughs> and even though he was worth, I forget, eight billion, these guys were worth more billions. And you're thinking, what in the world, dude? You're a billionaire. And we can kind of like judge that and be like, oh, wow, what a big problem. But listen, Phil Knight, the founder of Nike, felt like an imposter in that moment. Absolutely. And that is so true. And and that's the thing, you know, when, when I even talk with my kids or, you know, teens, especially, it's like they are growing up in a world that we didn't grow up in. That's true. With social media and Facebook and everything. Um, it's like a highlight reel. And that's what they don't understand is, you know, it's all of your highlight reels, what we see on the social media. Nobody puts on there, you know, I had a bad day and oh my gosh, my kids came home and started, you know, you don't see much of that. You see everybody's highlight reel, which is great. We all do it. Right. But they have that misconception that that's life and that they can't own up to that or they can't live up to that. And so we all deal with it. And it's just, you know, it's so prevalent today. Um, even more so than what we ever dealt with, you know, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I tell people often that when you write a book, it really is like looking in the mirror because, yes. you know, you ask yourself, like, what if this thing goes really big? Like, am I going to be able to handle it? What if this thing goes really bad and nobody reads it? Yes. Like, right. I mean, don't these things talk to talk to the person who's never written a book and, and just share like even how a book at, well, tell us about the whole process. Did you learn anything in the process? Did you learn something about yourself? Uh, well, absolutely. You know, writing a book is, I'm very much a very goal oriented person. It's like, if I set my mind to something, I, I want to make it happen. But even in that, even though you know you want to do something, and you know, I talk to people all the time, that are like, I want to write, I run and write a book, I just know I'm supposed to, but I'm scared. Yep. I'm speaking to a girl today, she's she's like, I'm just so scared, it's fear, mm. is that silly? It's like, no, that's normal. You know, if we don't, it's it kind of like we fear things that we know we are to do to step <laughs> out of, but we don't because, you know, what if we fail? What if we, well, so what? I yep. mean, if you fail, you get back up. I mean, it's, it's what we do. So. I learned a lot about myself when I was think. I knew I was supposed to write a book. Like I hear a lot of people, I just knew I was being called to write a book. Right. I knew. I always said that I knew that I didn't get all my crowns and banners for vanity reasons. I knew that they were for a bigger purpose because winning Miss Ohio didn't make sense to me at all at the time. Sure. So I've always known that it was for something bigger. And so even when I did Mrs. International, I did Mrs. International, one Mrs. Ohio, Mrs. International, because I saw it as a vehicle for me. That's and right. The, and didn't you do like some, was it kidney or diabetes? Like, yes. I was yes. a diabetes spokesperson and I wrote a children's book back years ago for, for my, my girls for about diabetes. And my goal was to become the national spokesperson for the American Diabetes Association. Well, I didn't know how that was going to work. But when the Mrs. Pageant came and with everything that I've learned along the way, I knew it was my vehicle. I okay. knew it could get me to where I wanted to be. And it did. And what happened for me to do that, I had to do a lot of personal development mm -hmm. and a lot of that mind thing and a lot of personal belief. And I had to, you know, uh, coach myself and, and learn and, and do everything that I needed to get there. And it's the same thing when it comes to writing a book. Right. You had this passion to write a book. And for me, I knew writing a book would be my next step to help my business, help my speaking um, career, everything that I wanted to do. And I knew a book would give me even more credential to do so. Yeah. Yeah. But Carrie, I hated English class. I'm <laughs> not a writer. I got through high school on cliff notes. I mean, yeah. I didn't read. That's just not me. So the thought of me writing a book was crazy. And of course, there were so many times that there was just no way I could do this, sure, even sure. after the process started. No way I can do this. I, I'm not meant to do this. And all that self-doubt and that self-bullying was coming back at me. Absolutely. And so everybody out there that's thinking that they want to or can they or can't they, that is just stuff that everybody goes up against. It doesn't matter. The Nike guy goes up against it. It's just yep, we have yep. to push through it. How badly do we want it? Oh because yeah, it'll yeah. change your life. That's right. It's right. Changed my life. And and, and we need to handle it. You know, I might be getting a little reverb. Are you getting on your phone? Or anything? 
Uh, I hear some from you. I don't know if it's, I don't hear it from me. I hear it from you. Hold on, hold on. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. So I think it is with you when I talk it reverbs by you. So maybe you have another window open or a phone open. Maybe, who knows? It's oh. all, who knows? We'll keep rolling. All right. But the thing is that uh, let, a, a book is something that is, I call it a magnifying glass because it really, uh, put it this way, a book doesn't ruin you, it reveals you, okay? Yeah. And unless we get this thing figured out, here's what I realize, Lisa, this is pretty deep, hang with me. Okay. Um, what's called, let's call promotion in life, more success, more influence, more impact, more income, let's call that a stage, okay? If we don't get this thing figured out that you're talking about, this self-esteem, this body image, this mind thing that you're talking about, we will actually run from the stage of life. We will actually self-sabotage so that we don't get on the stage because we're worried that if we are on the stage, we'll be revealed as an imposter. So right. I know a lot of people that say in one breath, you know, I'm supposed to be influential. I'm supposed to have impact. I'm supposed to have more income. I know I could do really good things with that. But then in life, they actually pull back and they don't take risks. They do play safe. They do play small because they say, oh, if I get up on that podium or platform or stage, I will be found out. Do you, do you think that's true? Oh, it's absolutely true. You know, I have a story that I always share, and it was back when I was um, the national spokesperson for the American Diabetes Association. And I also um, worked with an international pharmaceutical company, and they would take my children's book and I would travel and I would go stand in front of a room full of doctors, endocrinologists, these specialty doctors, and they wanted me to talk at these, these boring medical things. Right. And I would stand there, Carrie, and be so in my head um, because I thought I didn't go to college. Right. I was a, you know, by trade, I'm a cosmetologist, hairdresser, makeup artist. Right. And I'm, these guys are going to say that I am. You know, oh, I think I'm a beauty yeah. queen. I don't. I didn't go to college. Right. How am I going to talk to them? And my, it was my job to go up there and explain to them at the time the importance of diabetes education to their patients. Wow. And so I remember the first time going up there and just in my head, and it's like Lisa. I was with my husband, and he was just sitting there. He's like, you, "You're going to do great. Go knock them dead." That's awesome. So I just went up and stood there, and what you just said, it was like, "Okay, I got to. This is me. I'm just going to, you know, be myself." And I spoke and, and it was, you know, everybody would come up and talk to me after. But the, the best thing that ever happened to me was after my very first one that I did. That was back before you had email. There you go. So, but I remember Bristol Myers Squibb, the, the lady coming to me with letters that she had gotten in the mail from doctors that were out there saying, thank you for bringing her in. Thank you for the breath of fresh air in a boring medical meeting. And so it, for me, it was like, you know what? We're all good. As long as we're doing what we're passionate about. That's right. That's all. And I work with girls all the time that are doing things. And I'll say, as long as you're showing your passion, right. you're going to be great. You're going to be great I, no matter what you're talking about. I agree. We got to stop pretending and really play our parts and yes. we, we have some great questions. I'm also going to ask Tanisha to share a link because Lisa, I know that you and I chatted today and you're a graduate of uh, our program, Author Academy Elite. And by the way, great book. Let's talk about the subtitle, Five Steps to Overcome Our Misconceptions and Achieve Our Own Crowning Moments. And, and I love the title, Miss. Yeah. Conception. Okay. So I Play love the words. I love that. And you know, we spent a lot of time on the phone. I, I spend time yeah. with um, all of our authors in a small group format. So we can talk about the title, the yeah. back ads, yep. the, how do you turn a book in your business? Well, but right, I, I got to stop right there because okay. we were instrumental with, okay. because when I went to write my book, I had in my head. You know, I've never done this process before. And I had in my head how I wanted the book to go, what I wanted it to be about. But it was in my calls with you and us talking about the book and how do I do it? You really making me think differently and thinking, how am I going to take this book? 
if I'm just writing a book, what does that mean? But how am I going to take my thoughts in my book and make it into a business and, and it. make it into my business? And it, if it wasn't for coaching with you, I believe I would have never done that. And I believe I would have just had a book that would have been like, hey, read my story. Right, right. It would have been, who cares? You know, I mean, maybe somebody would be interested, but at the end of the day, but now I've learned how to take it and use it mm. to help other people. And I've been coaching and working with other people for years, but now I have an actual, you know, something I can use. And that's all because of Author Academy Elite. I would have never have thought that. Nor would I have ever had somebody working with me one on one like you did to say, hey, you got to think this, think about this, you know, and that's because of you. So, well, well, thank you. It, it's my I love it. I love to do it. I love to be an author coach. I love to be a publisher because I know for me, a lot of years, I felt that I couldn't get my message out. I couldn't right. get my story out. Right. I didn't know the publishing industry and it is a maze. But if you have a guide that can navigate through, even simple stuff, Lisa, like a lot of people think, oh, I'll just publish on CreateSpace. And they don't realize that if they publish on CreateSpace, they'll never be in a brick and mortar bookstore okay. because the brick and, the brick and mortar bookstore uh, does not take non-returnable books. Um, if they go with CreateSpace, they'll never have a pre-launch, pre-release strategy. They'll never have a hardcover. There's like so many things that they won't have, but most people don't know that. And that's why I, lo I love this world. I love this author journey and helping people. But let's talk a little bit because I even remember, I know we're going to get into some questions and Tanisha's going to share a link here about the, um, uh, this is a special link. It's only up until tomorrow night at, uh, 12 midnight, I believe. There's no credit card. You can't buy your way into this program. But what you can do is you can watch a special replay that I just did on Wednesday. And then what we're doing, Lisa, is we're picking our next 25 authors to work with. I believe probably six of those spots are already gone. Um, but then all next week, we're doing, you know, chatting with people that apply that we think might have a good book inside them. Do you remember that one call where we were chatting? Maybe you don't. I do. I, I remember weird stuff. But you, you've been coaching young ladies and you've been coaching people, but you even struggled. And I think a lot of listeners watching do. You even struggled charging for your service. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, because through my work with the ADA, right. everything would always feel like because my daughter has type 1 diabetes, you're, you feel like you're always – you don't want to give and give and give. And I, right. and I remember telling you, it's like, Carrie, I feel like, you know, everybody tells you, you need to hone your skill. You need to, you know, right. do, I've done this for years. I speak, I educate, I train, but I always feel like I don't want to charge because in my heart, I just feel like I'm supposed to be giving and giving right. and but I can't build a business that way. No, you, you know? can't build a business. There's, there's a few reasons wrong that, uh, that, that is a wrong mindset. For anybody who's listening, number yes. one, you will only be able to do your passion part time then. Yes. Because you'll say, you know what? I love this side. I love giving. I love giving, but I don't want to charge. So then if you're in a situation where you need a job, you'll have to do your day job. So right. you only are working from half of a heart. That's, right. that's the first reason. The second reason is. If you don't charge for your services and you do provide value and most of the people watching right now have a very unbelievable service that they can Absolutely. provide and we help them through the Author Academy Elite program really hone in. We call it your VPS, your value proposition statement. But if you don't charge people for your services, my favorite book says where your treasure is, your heart is. And what I've seen, Lisa, you've probably seen this too. When we, because I'm a, I'm a giver, you know when, know, when we give away everything, we're actually hurting our students Yeah, because they did not invest in it and they feel like, ah, eh, it was free, so true. you know? So, true. so yeah. you actually, what I've seen in, as I've now been a business coach for years, you actually stunt your client's growth and keep them at a level where they don't experience full transformation. Right. You know our mutual friend, I'll just say her first name, I won't say her last name, but she's very open about it. You know Erica. 
Yes. Erica was a single mom of five, you know, and yeah. she knew she needed to write a story. But the fact that, you know, she invested in the program, like she took it seriously and she's been back. Let's talk a little bit about Barnes and Noble and entrepreneur and you've been on Buzzfeed and you've been, you're going to LA. What doors has not just Miss Ohio, Mrs. International, but what doors has a book opened for you? So many, because when you're reaching out, even, you know, when you teach us how to market, you know, that's where even when I, in, in my world, when I, when I work with people, you know, and they're trying to get their businesses out there and things like that, you know, and you're teaching them how to reach out to media and what you do, you have to have something, you right. know, I mean, you can't just reach out and say, Hey, I'd love to talk to you and love to chat. Perfect. You've got to have something that gives because in their eyes, they just they want exactly what you you know, they just want to know, hey, is this a credible person? And you write a book and some some reason, all of a sudden you're credible. Yep. I mean, write a book, you're a credible person. And so, you know, the minute I'm sending out a news release or I'm, I'm reaching out and it's just like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you have a book. Now, they've not read my book. They don't know what my book is. They're just going about what I have to say, which is from my media page, which you teach us how to do our own media page. Exactly. All this stuff, it's all lined up. And so it just does open doors. You can't just reach out to them and give, make them a call and have they're going to come and have you on. You have to have a reason. You have to have your media page. You have to tell them exactly what you're going to talk about. You have to give them all the stuff so it looks like they've read your book. So yeah know what bullets they're going to ask you what questions do we do you want us to ask you because they've not read your book right so make it easy they want to do it it's it just opens up so many doors i just got invited um a lady because of videos that i put out she's like your videos um are so in line with a, a women's retreat we're doing at our church we would love wow. you to speak and then she said how much do you charge <laughs> and Gary, it was Pretty easy. <laughs> like, there you go. Charge. And she's like, great. We just got it approved. We'll let you know. So I'm going in September to a church, a big church in Columbus, and I'm going to be speaking at their women's retreat. So Fantastic. it's Fantastic. just the book. It's the talking. It's the, and it just opens doors. It does. You know, and what I've realized too, like everyone's a communicator, even people who say, you know, oh, by, and by the way, I'm an introvert, so it's all good. It's but, all mine. Yeah. So there you go. So. You know, sometimes the introverts, we think, oh, you know, I got to be this boisterous, extroverted person on interviews. But the point is this, that I believe we're all communicators. Mm -hmm. And for, for me, Lisa, every one of the seven books that I've written and then three ghost written, um, I became an expert on that topic. Like the book writing process forces you in a good way to get clear yes. on your message. Mm -hmm. I mean... Yes. You can say one of my old book titles and I can give a, you know, three day retreat right now on it because yeah. that's what it does. It forces you to get clear. Awesome. We have some great questions here. I want to ask these, by the way, huge uh, applaud, applause for Jean. Jean? No, it's Jean. Sorry. I don't have my glasses. On. Is it Jean? <laughs> but, but congrats to you. I mean, she just said, look, I randomly found this today but I'm tracking with Lisa and I just applied and that's awesome. So good for you, but let's answer some of these questions and go ahead, type in more questions as well. Anybody, John says, how can I, as a father, encourage and help my daughters with their self image? What do you think as a dad? You know, that's a great question because we have, I have two older daughters. Right. Um, I have a 24 year old and a 21 year old. Right. And I will tell you, you know, for me, because I dealt with all this growing up, uh, growing up, and in, you know, I had an eating disorder. I struggled yeah. with that for probably four or five years in yeah. my teens, early twenties. And so, for me, you know, there's a long story about it, and I won't get into it. But you have to, you know, I always told my husband, "We're not going to talk about weight in this house. Mm. We're not going to discuss it. It's not going to be a thing." And my kids see me exercise all the time; it's part of my life. But I'll tell you what. Yes, that's the way we were in our home, but you gotta remember these kids are out in the world. Oh yeah. So it is so hard. You just, you know, like with dads, you know, always encourage your daughters, you know, tell them they're beautiful. And I'm sure John does that all the time. You know, that's sure. what we do as parents. But the world's out there with them and social media's out there. Yeah. And so as parents, we're fighting against that all the time. 
Yeah. And you know, I have two daughters that we raise the same. They're two years apart and they are total, complete. <laughs> you know, you. they're just, they just are. And you know, I'm my oldest daughter. She is just like, the one thing I will say about my girls, and I think it is that they are so fine in who they are. Mm. Um, you know, I was raised in the 80s where you always had your hair done, makeup on, never, you know, yeah. like, go out with no makeup and a ponytail. They don't care. Yeah. You know, and, but yet they're put makeup on and, you know, they like to be girls too. So right. just encouraging them to be themselves and that they are beautiful. And and I think, John, I think the most thing I would, I would say too is to always introduce them and, and have them be around people that 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 you would like your ch your children to emulate if that makes sense that you makes know? sense um that makes sense that way that they can see role models that are different than what maybe they're seeing all the time on social media oh yeah yeah and and i mean i have two daughters too one one is 10 one is 8 and i don't know if you would agree but i saw something recently that said as fathers we should um esteem them for things other than, their look. other than their looks as well. Yeah. In other words, like, you know, my daughter comes home with a test and it's like, wow, you know, Isabel, that was incredibly amazing how you studied and then got this grade. Like, that is fantastic. Your, your discipline, your dedication, you know? So, I mean, would you agree that like yes. other things too? Yeah. You're, you're not, it's not just, you're beautiful. You're this, it's, you're yeah. smart. You're right. so, you know, you, you just, that's what I always told my, I always said, there's this little video where my oldest daughter with the little girl's bossy. I'm big enough. I'm strong enough. I can do anything. Right. And when I see little bossy little girls, I just think those are future leaders. Let oh them yeah. Know, because that's just, oh, yeah. who are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. My yeah, we grew up different. You know, it was always about, it was all as a girl it was about being pretty. Right. So when you grow up like that and where that is important to you, then that's where your self esteem goes. Yeah, exactly. So there I was in my twenties and I knew I was a pretty girl right. back then. I was tall. I was always told you should be a model. Sure. So when you have that and you're being told that all the time, then that's where your self-worth goes. Yeah. Performance. And it's not because anybody did it on purpose. I don't blame my parents or anything, but it's just how it was. Sure. So totally. that's where it went. And so, you know, totally. this generation as parents, all we can do is try to not put it on that, you know? Yeah. And I think some of the media, uh, in a positive way, some of the, you know, girl power and, and yeah. some of the esteeming, you know, whether it's Nike or other brands that are kind of trying to put that back on the map, I think is fantastic. Uh, Jody, Jody is one of our authors in Author Academy Elite. So she's got just a real heart for health and I love what she's doing. But she says, yeah, social media highlight reels have uh, that converse. She almost has that conversation every week. Yep. All the time. Totally. Yeah. And that's why I think sometimes social media posts that are the opposite, where people are saying, you know what, here's my struggle. And, you know, I'm not all okay. Sometimes that just like is a magnet for everyone else is like, finally, someone's being honest. And, and I, I will tell you, you want to know what's funny. The, you know what my one of my most viewed uh, Facebook posts were? What's that? It was the video when I went live for the first time. I think I remember that one. You yeah, said that. I'm like a total fool and I'm going, I don't know how to do this. You right, go, I, right. I think I had the most views. Why? Is because people could relate to me. Exactly. Relatability. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Here's one. Here's one. Here's here's an author. And by the way, Chris, Kristen, glad you're with us. Um, Lisa, you know this because you get to meet new authors sometimes. Yes. How many times have we had authors join our program that said, I, I know I didn't do my first book the right way. Oh, all the time. And, oh, and, and time. of course our program, we show you how to write, publish and market yes. uh, the right way. But Kristen says she's enjoying these ideas. What's the number one thing you can do to get out of your head? That's great, Kristen. That's a great question because I write about that in my book because one of what we talked about with bullying, you, when you are in your own head, you are bullying yourself. Mm. You, are talk, you are doing all that. And it's, I know you hear this all the time about self-talk. Sure. But I am here to tell you through my long life and things yeah. that I've accomplished, it is always, always me changing the way I talk to myself. That's good. That is when 
So if you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I just, I'm this, I'm not supposed to be writing this book. You got to acknowledge that right away. You've yeah. got to be like, uh oh, that's me talking to myself. Nobody's telling me that. I'm talking to myself. So you have to change that. You have to become your biggest, um, you're just your biggest fan. Yeah. You've got to, you, if you're not telling yourself how fabulous you are and that you can do this and you were meant to do this and you're supposed to do this, if sure. you're not telling you that, you, how do you expect anybody else to tell you that? Absolutely. And it's not easy, Kristen. If there is times when, you know, you're, you're faking yourself. You're faking the talk to yourself. But I promise you, you keep doing it every day. You do it every day. I used to go on walks. And when I would walk, I would say the same thing over and over and over to myself. Yep. And all my subconscious just started to believe it. Right. As crazy as it sounds, it works. So sure. the best way, the number one way to get out of your own head is to start changing the talk that's in your head. I love that. Positive self talk. I love that. Talk yourself the way you would talk to your best friend. You would never tell your best friend, you're not going to be able to do this. That's crazy. <laughs> right. you always be encouraging your best friend. You would never tell your best friend, oh, you're fat. You look fat in those jeans. Get them off. No. So why do you tell yourself that? That's good. That's really good. Sorry, but that's just, I mean, no, it's I love it. I love it. About that. Yeah. I love it. And, you know, I know we're talking to women. We're talking to men tonight. We're, we're hitting everybody. One thing, Lisa, that I've realized, because as an author coach, I hear that in authors a lot. Like, you know, I'm starting to write my book and then I look and see, you know, Tony Robbins book. And I think, what am I doing? Or Seth Godin, you know, why, why am I going to write a book? I can't be like them. What I often say, Lisa, is that you are not focusing on your audience or your right. readers. That's right. Right. I mean, that's that's to me the You're lie on yourself. Yeah. I mean, that's the lie of the enemy. Yes. The, enemy, the enemy wants you to be all focused on yourself and be like, you know, I can't do this or whatever. And I've seen you have a tremendous impact with with ladies and listeners and readers. But to do that, you got over yourself. So I love I love what you're saying. You're saying you're be yourself's biggest fan best advocate and realize that the book is for them. It's for the readers. Right. And that's when your impact's going to skyrocket. So many times we are our own focus. It's not until we look outward that we really begin to have that exponentially grow. Here's uh, here's some more um, questions. When were you Miss Ohio and Mrs. International, and when did you write your book? No, we're not doing dates. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No yeah. dates. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Just Google her. Google her. Right. You can Google find me. Her. We'll see you all over. Um, I was actually, I was Miss Ohio in 1989 89. when I was at the Miss USA pageant. So it was a long time. I was 24 years old. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, you know. Didn't you say, uh, who was the year after? Or the year before. Halle you know. Berry was two, Halle Berry was two years before me. Halle Berry was two years before yeah, you. Yeah, so I could have been Halle if I was just two years earlier. <laughs> there you go. There you go. No, no yeah, I Berry love that. Two years before uh, me, um, I was Mrs. Ohio and Mrs. International in '98 and '99. Um, okay. So again, quite a while ago. I was in my late 30s at the time. So. Yeah. Um, that's great though. Yeah. And it was, and you know what? It, it was an amazing experience and I will never apologize for loving being a girl. I am so girly. I love it. Um, <laughs> I don't apologize for loving to wear makeup and do my hair. I'm a cosmetologist by trade. This is my life. So, you know, um, a lot of people are, you know, women empowerment or how can you do a pageant? That's a good, well, I always, for me, being a feminist and women empowerment is just encouraging women to do what they want and what they love and that we should all be able to do whatever we want. And if, if a girl wants to do a pageant or if a girl wants to be an actress or get on stage or whatever, if that's her dream and her goal, that's women empowerment there. It's not right. judging anyone right. for what they do. And so, you know, pageantry for me, especially in the 80s and 90s, changed my life. And when I work with girls to this day, I don't do a lot of anything with the pageant world anymore. But when I do work with girls, you know, to me, I'm teaching them how to interview. Yeah. I'm teaching them with any interview. My daughter, my oldest daughter has been around me for a long time. And I, you know, work with them for, with interview. Her very first job out of college, she graduated. And two weeks later, she was a corporate recruiter interviewing wow. people because she is such a great interviewer. Yeah. 
because she knows how to interview. And then when she wanted to leave there, she came home. She was going, Mom, I need to practice interviewing because I'm always interviewing people. I need to practice. So she said, you're not going to believe this, but I have an interview with Ohio State University. She didn't even go to Ohio State. She goes, but I'm going to just do it for practice. Yeah, you know how, you know how that went. She got right. the job. She works for Ohio State University. Wow. She knows how to interview. That's great. And that's, that's great. We have to, you have to be able to, you know, you have to hone in on your skills. So if you want to write a book and you want to be a coach and you want to be a speaker, yeah. then you need to start honing in on those skills. You need yeah. to find people that can help you do that. Don't ever do anything unprepared. How do you do that? Well, to me, you reach out to Author Academy Elite because it's got everything that you need that will teach you how to do that. And you'll meet other people that are doing the same exact thing that you want to do. That's great. Tons That's of people great. that are good. I mean, I have tons of friends now that I've met through this that I've spoken with and I do things with. It's just the group itself is worth price and admission. I mean, it's just amazing. I, lo I love everybody. Yeah. Well, we got some more questions, but let's let's talk about this. So, one of the things we do, by the way, when did your book release? It's just this um this summer. Yeah, so this yeah. summer it released. Yeah, and I'll never forget the day I saw you and Deborah Hayes, one of our other authors, do a joint Barnes and Noble book signing. We did. So part of our program is that we teach you. Um, so this is not self publishing. Um, but we we literally teach you how to get into Barnes and Noble bookstores, book signings. Many of our authors have done talks there. But how cool was that to oh walk gosh. into Barnes and Noble, signs the whole thing? How, it, was really it was really surreal because number one, it's funny how sometimes God has bigger dreams than you even had because I never in a million years did I ever dream that I would be signing a book at Barnes and Noble because <laughs> right. you know, it was like. But so it was really cool, and like you said, um, we would have never have done that if it wasn't through you coaching us through that, how you do that, and Deb reaching out, and then me going down, and we had the whole day. I, they had us um, speaking twice that day. We were there all day. It was we had my I had my daughter come down. She was home from college, and she did videos for us so that we could each have a video, kind of to, to show the highlights of the day, and it was just a great experience. I mean. Who gets to do that? Yeah. You know, oh, do that? And it wasn't even in my hometown. It wasn't like I just went to the Barnes and Noble up the street for people who know me. I mean, right. it was in Kentucky. I don't live in Kentucky. Yeah. And it was just really cool. Yeah. It was amazing. That's cool. That's cool. And, and we also have a conference that all of our authors uh, come to. They get a ticket. They, we have a red carpet book signing. There's a photographer. And then you spoke. How cool was that for you to speak? and receive a standing ovation. How cool is that? Well, that's that's my thing. I love sharing I, I, and speaking and sharing is and it's what I've been doing for years. And so to have the opportunity to actually be standing on a stage with my peers, with, you know, not just speaking to a group that wants to sure. what I have to say, but actually my peers, people that are sitting out there that have published books and that are, you know, were in my class when we joined and all of that stuff. It was so cool to be talking to them and just sharing and then knowing that they're just as excited for me as I am because they've either published or they're writing. It's, it's, I don't think there'll be any better time that I'll ever talk on stage than that moment, just because you know that those people are just as excited for you as you are. So, That's awesome. Yeah, That's awesome. Great. Jody asked a question. And by the way, folks, let me just say this. If you just joined us, welcome. If you know someone who needs to know anything about self image, body image, the way we talk to ourselves, writing, publishing, marketing, please share this. Please tag them. Um, Tanisha has a gift for you. It's a brand new ebook called How to Turn Your Book into 18 Streams of Income. One of the things that kind of sets our program apart from a lot of other things out there, first of all, we guarantee the program, 100% satisfaction guarantee, but we also teach you how to turn your book into a business into a movement, into a ministry, whatever. We want you to to take that book and be able to turn it into a dream business. So that's one of the things we do. Jody asks you, Lisa, what was the hardest part of the writing process? Did you have any meltdowns that led to redefining moments as the book came together? Uh, yes, many, <laughs> many meltdowns. Because Jody, you really do have those times where you're, 
you you get into your own head, like we talked about, where you're just sitting here thinking, I can't I can't do this. I'm not a writer. I, you know, I'm a speaker. I talk. You can give me a topic, and I can get up on a stage and talk about it for an hour. I have no problem as long as you tell me what you want me to do. I I can do it. But to write, mm. I, I, that's just not my thing. And and I wasn't in, good in English, and I, you know, I didn't take college prep English for crying out loud. Yeah. Let's go basic because it's just not my thing. But so, but I think everybody does that. I think probably even Carrie, when he's writing his last book, Elixir Project. Oh yeah. All these books, but he's there and he's like, in the, there's, I'm sure there were moments when it's like, Oh, absolutely. Uh, I don't know about this. Is this absolutely. the way I should be going with this character or this? That is just the normal process. And I don't think that whether you're new to the process or, you know, you have one book already done or 10, I think you're always going to go through that. That's yeah. normal. It's natural. And sometimes it, help, it It really, I think, I think personally, when we go through that, sometimes it's just because we need to share how we're feeling yep. with someone else because to get a different perspective. And for me, it was my, always my husband, you know, and he would say, now come on, you know, and then you're like, that's right. That's right. I can do, you know, right. And it teaches us how important people are, how important, how God speaks to us through other people sometimes. Right. And so I think a lot of times we have that that comes in and we rely, it helps us rely on others. And, and even to this day, I mean, I'm a coach, I'm a speaker, I help other women, I work, but there are days that I have a bad day. Sure. You know, and so I know who I can rely on. And I always tell my friends, I always tell my business people that I work with, if you are having a bad day, you always, what I say, you call up. You don't <laughs> call good. down. You don't call down to somebody that is going to roll around in the muck with you. Sure. You call up to that person that you know is going to pull you out of the muck. I love it. A lot of times, human nature and we people, when we get down, we want to talk to those people that are going to roll around in it with us because that's just what we want to do. But you can't do that. If you're writing a book, you call up and you'll get out of it quickly and you'll move on. I love it. Well, listen, folks, we're going to open it up one more time for questions. It can be anything. It can be about writing, publishing, marketing, body image, self-esteem. I'm just going to let everybody know if you just jumped in. We are literally uh, picking our next 25 authors that we're going to work with. Lisa, you know um, I got a jacked up shoulder here, so I'm not going to lift it with two hands. <laughs> but, you know, I have books and books and books of our authors. I put them on my shelf. Um, you know, I mean, I could just go through these fiction, nonfiction, business, education. Children's you, books. <laughs> uh, children's books, coffee table books. But we literally have have now worked with 400 authors. It's been truly amazing. Um, our publishing company started four years ago. It's unlike anything else out there. It's not traditional publishing. It's not self-publishing. It's you owning all your content, keeping all your profits. And we show you basically how to build your book into a business. We have an event for you. You speak on the red carpet. I mean, it's everything back in 2004 that when I first started, I wish I would have had. Right. <laughs> um, you know, you've seen some of the applications. You're helping me pick some of them. Yes. Um, but we had uh, hundreds apply, thousands watched on Wednesday. We, I took a screenshot. We had 4,999. Um, wow. So we only have 5,000. But, uh, you know, so it was a full group. Hundreds of those have applied. And we are literally going through up until tomorrow night, Sunday, who is, who wants to be published and who should we partner with to publish? And those that we feel are a good fit, we interview them and we talk with them and we chat and we, they interview us. You talk about interviews, it's a mutual interview and we see if this is a good fit. And that's how we found you. Yes. And, and that's how we found your business partner, Deborah who wrote the book Rise. But what would you say to someone, we'll get to a self-esteem question here from Lori in a moment, but what would you say to someone right now who says, write a book? Oh my gosh, I mean, I, I've thought of that. Maybe people have told me that, but I could never do that. I mean, you were at that place. Oh yeah. At one point in your life where book was not possible, not even in your mind, but today you're an author. 
What would you tell that person right now who's maybe wrestling with belief? You know, I, I, I have a couple of friends that have reached out to me and said, I've always wanted to write a book. And my question, then I always look at them and go, then why don't you? Well, it's because I don't know how. They either don't know how, they don't know the process. How do you do it? Um, you know, and that's where it's like, well, it's kind of like I teach with anything that you want to do. You want to do it, you have to be prepared. You have to find the right people. You have to find the right coach with whatever it is. I, I always, this is an analogy that I give to people all the time. If you wanted to become an ice skater, yeah. just throw on some ice skates and go out there and try to teach yourself how to, to ice skate around. You're going to hire a coach. You're going to get the right equipment and you're going to learn. And that's why it's so, why people think that when they want to do something else in life, that they wouldn't do that. It's like, mm -hmm. we'll do all that. If, if my son wanted to all of a sudden, you know, play hockey, then I'm going to go, well, let's, we better find a hockey coach. We better right. get all the equipment because we do that for our kids. But yet when it comes to us and investing in ourselves, That's deep. Mm, we get hung up on that. Yeah. I mean, I'll drive five hours to sit and watch my son play four games of basketball at some thing because that's what he wants to do with, you know, in college or whatever. And I'll, I'll make it happen. I'll right. figure out how to get there. I'll figure out, I'll, you know, figure out how to pay the entry fee. Sure. I'll, tells why we're there I'll do all that but then oh I want to write a book oh it's gonna call well oh I can't do that sure sure we don't want to invest in ourselves yeah so you have to invest in yourself you said it best when you said you know when you if you give things to people all the time they don't take it serious mm -hmm. you have to invest in yourself in the single business that you are going to open whether it is a pizza shop down the road or any business at all to open that business there's going to be an investment this is just a different piece of investment. This is investing in yourself mm. as a business owner. So if you're, I talked to a lady today, she wants to be the next Beth Moore. Well, that's great, but you just, not just going to happen. You have to invest in yourself. Mm. You have to invest that's in the right people. You have to invest in the right people to get you in the path to where you want to go. How do you do that? You find the best. If you're going all in, you find the best. You don't go, there was, I talked to somebody today that had went to this, had their book published, she said, I didn't even do a proposal. I just sent in my manuscript and now she's it's like, well, that's, that's like, here's some skates. Right. Right. <laughs> Hit the ice. Now that you know the process, you know that our model is really, it's a 52 mini mission model that literally breaks down idea to implementation. It includes launch party, launch team, digital press kit, it, it includes everything. everything. And we show you, folks, check out that free ebook, How to Turn a Book into 18 Streams of Income. It's not theory. We take pictures and we show you exactly what we do, all, every book that we publish. Here's a great question. What if you have several books in you? How do you decide where to start? I love that one. But let's go to her first question because this is the one that she asked earlier. I don't want to skip it. What is your top tip for improving your self-esteem? So I know you talked about not bullying yourself. Is that? Yeah, what, what I you think the that's my number one top tip. But I always say um, what I talk about it in my book. It's is, um, you know, the for instance, when you're going into and I see this all the time with people, if you're going in to an, a big event or something and you're very intimidated and you, you know, it's like, ah, I don't want to go or whatever. I always tell people before you go in, you get yourself in the mindset. What would it look? What would you look like if you were that confident person? Interesting. Let's say there's, a, there's a twin, and she's going in that room. And she's owning that room. What does that look like? Okay. How do you wish you were? That's good. And, and if you see that, and you see how I wish, there are times to this day when I'm going. Because we talked about it, I'm kind of an introvert as well. I say I'm a practicing extrovert. I can do it when I need, but I just assume be home in my sweats. Um, but. So when I'm going, there's times it's like, oh, or I'm a little intimidated, like with the doctors. And it's like, no, nope. how would I be if I wasn't? Mm. How would I act if I wasn't? And then you've just got to go there in your head. And That's when good. you do it, all of a sudden it's like, dang, I just <laughs> owned that room. That's good. You know? And so that would be, you know, to, if you want to improve your self-esteem, it's just, you've got to get there in your head. Again, it's all, it's all in your head. I love it. I love it. Well, look, we had, I just checked our numbers. We had four people, even just now, apply. Hey! Uh, so so that's, that's pretty cool. I love, it. 
Um, that well, I mean, that, people that's, have dreams inside of them that they want to do this, and they're just scared. Yeah, that, I mean, that's awesome. And listen, for people who are watching this, maybe you know someone. Maybe they had a chat with someone this week, and this came up. I mean, we hear that all the time. That you know, oh, I was just talking to my sister or you know my dad or whoever and we were talking about what is it you know what would it look like if i became an author i know for me lisa um by the way my mom was on before she said hey to you so good job lisa. <laughs> <laughs> but but i know for me growing up you know you and i relate in more ways than one you struggled with an eating disorder you're not good enough because your weight I fell into a self-injury cutting addiction because I didn't think I was good enough. So, I mean, this is common, you know, that that we can either sit there in our pain or what I tell people is that your pain, leverage it into a platform. Yes, because you can help others. I, I, that's what you did. You leveraged your pain into a platform and now you're saving young women uh, older women from that uh, crown, you know, what do you say? Well, I, so I get your own crown. What What's going to be your crown? What's your crowning moment? You know, I, I talked to a 63 year old woman today on an interview and she's like, I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm too old to do this or whatever. And it's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, and you I, know, one of our authors who's 83. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have a, yeah. I have a chapter in my book that says it's, it's, it's too late. That's a misconception. It's too late. It's, no, it's never too late. If you, you've got to keep moving. You yeah. got to keep moving. That's that's what keeps us young and alive. And you know, if, if I'm fifty something years old standing on stage talking to yeah. young girls about it, I think it's great. You know, if, if I can help them in any way get through some of the stuff that I went through. Oh, I'm with you. I'm doing my job. I'm with you. I'm trying to your your friend Angela just said hey. So she's here, but I'm trying to find her book. Her book. Her book. Her book's on my shelf. Here it is. Hang on. I'll say mine's in my my shelf in my closet. Here's Angela's book. I mean, here here's a here's a woman who has a son, uh, and I want to make sure I say the correct term, but he has you know unique needs, and Spencer, and here's a woman who says, you know what? I'm not only going to tell Spencer's story, but I'm going to use his story help others, help other people, right? So I love what she says. Um, she researched a ton of self-publishing and we're not self-publishing, but she found out that it was, you know, the best decision of her life. So that's cool. Um, I, I'd love to answer this one because again, we're here to help people self-image, body image, writing, publishing, marketing. Um, we are going to probably wrap this up in about seven minutes. So if you feel like maybe, maybe I should be one of these 25, you know, who knows? I would encourage, don't psych yourself out apply. Um, we can't take everybody, but we are serious about looking for stories and authors that are going to be a good fit. Um, I tell people often that, look, of course, I have more books than me. You do too, Lisa. But I mean, so I wrote seven. I can relate with Lori. What if you have several books in you? Here's what I do. I say, what book has the most energy around it, around uh, inside you first? Um, that's the book I always wrote, or uh, I tell people to write their book for one person, their former stuck self. Okay. Because you're the most empathetic to that person. You understand that person. And what book would you like to write for your former stuck self? I mean, these are questions. It's not the only question. Um, of course we can say, well, which book will make the most money? But I never think that that question that's not what motivated me, you know, because I think the money will come, but it comes around the passion. You, you got to say, what book am I most passionate about? Here's the other thing, Lisa, and then we'll get to some more questions for you. If you want to go get sunburn, you go sit out on the beach. and It takes three hours or you can take a magnifying glass, put that same sun on your skin. and It takes three minutes to burn a hole in your skin. In other words, what change? It's the same sun, the same skin focus. Too many people try to slow bake their dream. They try to slow bake their idea. They say, oh, it's just going to happen. And it never happens because they're not focused. They're doing 55 other things. What you did, Lisa, is you said, for a short season in my life, 
I'm going to take a time out with some other things. I'm still going to be a mom, still going to be a husband or a wife. But, but you said, I'm going to like invest this time. Do you think it was worth the focus that you took? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, Carrie, because we'll, I hear this a lot too, is I don't have the time or maybe not now. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of like having a, a baby or having children. When is the right time? <laughs> Come on. When is the right time? And you know, just like I do, during my time, I had a lot of things come up, which a lot of people do. My husband got transferred. We had to literally up and move to a different part of the state. Yeah. I had, I've never moved anywhere like that before in my life. We had to, I had to move my kids. Now, you know, I had some issues with one of my children at the time that we had to deal with. Yeah. Um, and so some medical issues. So I had a lot of things coming at me and there were times that I would had to step away from the book. But yeah. the great thing about the, the program is the 52 mini session model is that it keeps you on track. Okay. And I tell authors that, all the, or authors that all the time that are thinking about it, it's like, you know, there were days when I was sailing and I could knock out three, four, five sessions in a, in a morning. And then there were weeks that I couldn't touch it. Yep. But the thing is, is when you come back, you're, you know, right where you are. And, you know, and so it's, is there the perfect time? I mean, yeah, when you're passionate about a book and you feel it in your gut that you need to write a book, you you just figure it out. It's never going to be perfect. It's You're never going to have this six months time of nothing happening that I can just sit and write. I mean, if you do, God bless you. you yeah, right. Most people right. don't. We're parents. I have four children. I mean, we're juggling. We're moving. We're Absolutely. Doing, Absolutely. It's just, it, to me, it was just like, I don't know. It's like your little escape and, and always having that in the back of my mind, man, I'm going to, I'm going to have a business after this and I'm going to be able to do things on my time. Yeah. And so, and that's what you just keep pushing forward to. That's awesome. We're going to do one more question for you. Tanisha, can you please put in the link for Lisa's Amazon a book on Amazon? You can get her book at 39,000 channels around the world. We do that on purpose when we, um, do our uh, Author Academy Elite authors, we literally get them the same distribution as uh, Little Brown Jug, Harper Collins, Simon Schuster, Doubleday, I mean, you, you name it. Um, so you can get her book anywhere. But we wanna share that link here because some people are saying, you know what, I want this book, I, have a, I want it for myself, or I, I have a niece, or a, a sister, or something like that, daughter. Um, I'm excited to hear you speak. Uh, you know, you own the stage when you came and spoke at, at our conference, but that's cool that you're going to be speaking at a retreat. You also were interviewed by Entrepreneur Magazine. Is that true? I wrote an article for them. Um, wow. wow. You wrote an article for them. Buzzfeed, like just give it just, you know. Um, actually, I was on LA Talk Radio when it was first released. Um, actually, you showed us how to reach out to big name endorsers, and I got a big name in the fitness world, which is Kathy Kaler, who used to be on the Today Show, and was their fitness wow. was big for me, especially back then. And so, and she has a talk radio, and I was on talk radio out there. I've been out to Montana at a speaking engagement. I'm going to be going out to see another author friend and speaking, or being at a, a big event for the American Diabetes Association in Arkansas wow. in two weeks. Um, I've been to, on local TV stations, local um, talk shows, yeah. um, you know, and basically it's, you can do more. It's just the time, you know, what right, time right. you have. And so yeah. for me, I just want to really get out there and start speaking again. Yeah. Really you also have a business and part of the program, we showed you how to do a launch party. Yeah. Um, so many authors, they, they think, oh, you know, I shouldn't do that or I don't know how to do that. I mean, we show people how to do that for zero budget, all the, oh, way yeah. to, all the way to something crazy, like when I did the live stream uh, world record, you know, crazy stuff too. But wherever people are at, I mean, we have people that join Author Academy Elite. We, we, we pick them and they are uh, the runner up. Remember the, the biggest loser. We have, we <laughs> have her. We have the guy who was the first high schooler ever on a Sports Illustrated cover. Oh, well, that's right. Remember you saw his, his yeah. book cover today. Um, so we have all these, you know, crazy, cool people. And then we have people that nobody's ever heard of right? and they crush it. In fact, some of those people crush it more. Oh yeah. Which is so, so fun. So 
let's let's finish with this question, Kristen, and the, uh, not Kristen, Lisa. It's by Kristen, but she says, "What?" Kristen says, "What is your crowning moment? What's one of your crowning moments, Lisa?" Well, obviously, my book is a big <laughs> yeah. crowning moment. Yeah, and Kristen, it's it's a big crowning moment for me is because it, it was doing something that number one, I never thought I would be able to do or know how to do and how it has given me such a bigger voice. It's my vehicle. It's mm. the same vehicle that I used when I was Mrs. International and I used that as my vehicle to go out and I had a health, I, and I still do a health and wellness business. I talk on health and wellness all the time. Um, I have you know people in my life that are type one diabetics on insulin pumps. I know nutrition inside and out because I was the spokesperson for three years. That was a huge crowning moment for me. Not the, just the crown that I wore, but the crowning moment in my life when I was doing something that I was passionate about. Like you talked Absolutely. about, you're, you're passionate. You can do, you can, you can tell me tomorrow, I need you to do an hour talk on one on me. Like I'm there. I can do it like that. Right. I'm passionate about it. And so the most recent is this book because it's the same thing. It's like I knew it was going to be a vehicle to help get my voice heard, to help help older women who think they're stuck, to help younger girls get out of their own heads, you know, to help moms in their 30s and 40s who feel so overwhelmed and not about that, you know, that they can still accomplish wonderful things. And so um, that's my biggest crowning moment. I, I, love will, have, I will have more. I Just love like it. We all, do. we all should have many. That's the truth. Yeah. Look, we have. People are flooding in, man, all over the place. Lots of lots of comments. David Hancock, my friend, just a second ago, uh, really cool dude, jumped on. So good for you, David. Uh, Derek Depry, who's one of our authors from Wisconsin, this guy is on fire, Lisa. He He's speaking all the time. I follow him on Instagram. He just spoke at some keynote event yesterday, but his book is called Shift. Uh, and it's uh, the subtitle I think is from frustrated to fulfilled. So he's the owner of a Wisconsin athletic club, has a day job, but realized, you know what I need, even though I'm a dad of two young girls actually, so maybe they should check out Lisa's book, but you know, he's crushing it, it with speaking. The book yeah. has opened all these doors. He, yes. for, he's a keynote speaker now. So yeah. I love everybody who's jumping in. Um, Pamela says, I would love to write a book. My big brother had a dream to be a writer. Pamela, apply. Okay. You need to apply. Um, folks, if you don't apply, it's like you're already saying. You're already yeah. saying no. That's right. You are. You are. And um, Angela, you know, uh, she talks about what set her on fire to write Spencer's book. Maybe you need to write a book for someone else. Like that's what Angela did. And we've seen that where people, uh, who's that? Um, Diane, you saw her in the tribe today. She's writing a, a book about her mom and Alzheimer's. Remember this? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like remembering mom is the name or something like that. So listen, books are therapeutic. Uh, they're healing. Um, you experienced some healing through your book. I know I certainly did. But uh, this has been great, Lisa. We put the link for your book. So thank you for doing that, Tanisha. Thank uh, you. Check it out on Amazon. Maybe you want to bring Lisa to your event. Maybe you want her to speak. Love it. Um, yeah, she's <laughs> then. Uh, um, Carrie, you can have him check my website at lisamosier.com too. Tanisha, pop that in, lisamosier.com. That would be great. And thank you. Um, uh, you know, look at it. people are just experiencing a lot of healing tonight. A April says she has nine children, four wow. with autism, two who are deaf, and we made it through an abusive marriage. Look, that's the type of story. And, Absolutely. and don't rule yourself out. Like Erica, one of our top authors, single mom of five, you know, like her husband left her and he was a pastor. And, and yet she turned her book. It's called, um, you taught my feet how to dance. Look, the pain that you had in your life is not the last chapter. That's right. Right? I mean, in fact, the book is where you're going to leverage this and, and use it for your own healing, but also to help other people. And that's um, amazing. Nine kids. That's, that's amazing. That's, that's, that's a feat in itself. That is a crowning moment. Um, 
<laughs> Pamela, Pamela says this, what if we are not quite sure what we would write about? Lisa, I think when you first joined, and again, I'm, I'm a coach now to over 400 authors that have graduated or are in process, but I don't know anyone who comes in with their idea no, and, not and at all. the final product is the same thing. Like the process that we take people through, the proposal, my coaching calls, the modules, it shapes it. We just take the dream and the desire and then shape it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I had no idea. I mean, I knew I wanted to write a book. I knew kind of what I wanted to write about. But I, as I said, you took me in a whole different direction. Yeah. And I'm blessed that it happened. So Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and even people who say memoirs are their thing, um, we show you that if you really want to make the most influence, impact, and income, and you're not Angelina Jolie or Brad Pitt, <laughs> You know, don't write a memoir, write it, but don't brand it that way. And that's what I did with my books, Your Secret Name, D Deeper Path, and Day Job to Dream Job. It's my story, but I brand it in a way that it right. actually reaches the public, and that makes much more business sense. And we show you how to do all that as well. Yep. Well, Lisa... Thank you so much. I know this is okay. awesome. We've gotten a lot of people that have said, hey, I think I might want to apply. Sunday apply. night's the deadline. Apply. Sunday night's the deadline. So the yeah. replay's up. The link's here. The application link is here. We explain the whole model um, on that replay. But literally, if you wait, you will miss your chance. So if you know someone who needs to see this, tag them, invite them, share it. And uh, thanks. And someone, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't cost you a thing to apply. Just, just, just trust your gut. Go out and do it. Just apply. Awesome. I mean, awesome. see what happens from there. April, April took your advice. She just applied. So yeah, this could be the story: the the nine kids and the and the deaf and the autism. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. Thanks, 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 thanks for thanks, having me. Lisa. Yeah, it's it was a blast. And everybody, take care. I hope this was inspirational for you. We'll see you. Bye.